It's been almost 24 years since Australian forces were deployed to East Timor after violence broke out following a vote on the country's independence from Indonesia. But historian Professor Craig Stockings has examined the crisis in detail, publishing a book that took three years to be approved for publishing by the Department of Foreign Affairs. And he joins me now live. Professor, quite an effort there to get that book published. Thank you so much for your time here on Weekend Live. Talk us through the history here and the significance of, of this event. So I'm delighted for the uh, chance to speak with you this afternoon. So thank you for the invitation. So what we have here, Simon, is the first volume of the latest official history series uh, produced by Australia. There have been six dating back to World War I and Charles Bean. So I'm the sixth official historian, and this is the first volume we've released out of a planned six volumes, which will also cover Iraq and Afghanistan. And as you say, Simon, this particular volume covers the crisis of 1999 and Australia's response to that. But I will make this point, Simon, before we continue. When we say official history, the tradition in Australia is for independent historians to write these investigations. So official refers to my access to the classified official record. It doesn't mean that what we produce is a government view or a departmental or bureaucratic view. Uh, the views are entirely mine and my team, and there is strength and credibility in that, but there's frictions too, as I'm sure you'd understand. Yeah, absolutely. Was it something of a policy reversal, though? Yeah, I think that's a that's a fair thing to say. Uh, we certainly examined what, what has been called a policy continuity in Australia since the Indonesian invasion of 1975 of East Timor where it was always seen um, in a very real politic and certainly a logical way that Australian interests would be best served to make sure that East Timor stayed as part of Indonesia. So this narrative that has arisen since 99 that somehow uh, the government and the uh, and officialdom did its best to support East Timor's self-determination is not borne out by the historical record. Um, and if we define a policy reversal by getting the exact opposite to what you set out to get, then absolutely our uh, friend independent East, independent East Timor is an astounding policy reversal or the policy reversal of a, of, a, uh, of a generation, you might say. How much drama did you have getting this book published? Can you talk me through what you had essentially available to you and, and what the restrictions were? So we have available to us um, the classified record uh, up to a quite a reasonably highly classified uh, level for myself and the team to examine the government documents in, in that case. And there's hundreds of thousands of them we've collected and analysed. On top of that, uh, Simon, for this particular volume, it would have been about 250 individual interviews by people who are there, both policymakers and, and participants. So that's the environment in which we work. Now, it is entirely appropriate and typical once we've finished a volume for all of those stakeholder officials to make sure that it is unclassified and okay for public release. That is to make sure there's nothing in it that is a danger uh, to Australia in a classified information sense. That's as it should be and that process was pretty uh, uh, seamless and, and not much was changed as a result. I would say though, Simon, that, it, that the reason this took an example or, or an explanation as to why this took so long to clear is there's a, the question is when does reasonable information security stop? Uh, when do certain bureaucratic uh, preferences or comfort take over? And it's in that grey area that causes to have a, uh, a period of three years of negotiations, longer indeed than it took to write the book, Simon. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, the book's called Born of Fire and Ash, um, a fantastic title you've come up there. Um, there are a few nervous people down there at Duntroon or in the, in, in the Defence Force uh, headquarters about it at all? No, I don't think so, actually, Simon. In fact, of all stakeholders, um, I've found Defence to be the most uh, understanding of the value it is of what we're trying to do here. There's value in the truth, even if it's not always an easy story. Uh, we, we tell the bad with the good. Uh, it's not my it's my job to present all of that to the Australian public. So not really. Our defence was quite supportive, in, even the provision of people and resources. And don't let me give the wrong impression. The the vast majority of officialdom here in Canberra is in support of uh, what the Prime Minister called a nationally important project. 
but at the same time, there is a, a portion of that bureaucracy less enamoured with the idea of uh, truth telling in a way that we've done it, um, and who are not not well disposed to the project. Full stop. So I'm, I don't want to paint a picture of uh, the Canberra bureaucracy and the departments being not on our side. That's not the case. But there is and always has been an element. Would rather this, these sorts of books and this book in particular never saw the light of day. No, no doubt. Well, it's a great effort that you've managed to get this book published and. Uh... Hopefully, hopefully I'll get hold of it sometime soon and be able to read a bit more about it. But uh, as I said, the book's name, Born of Fire and Ash, if you'd like to go and find it. Thanks very much for your time, Professor. Thank you so much, Simon, and thank you, viewers.